Hey, what's up folks? This is A from A Tech Reviews and today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new nice HCK F1 Pro Planar Magnetic IM. Uh, to go back a little bit, my first start with Planar Magnetic was, was with headphones from the Odyssey to Hyperman. Had a great experience. Uh, one of the most detailed headphones you can find. Um, and now it has started for IMs. Of course, we know the Timeless 7 Hertz, and then the Z12 and the S12, S12 Pro, and the Claynar. And it's actually like I got in a lot more. We have the P2 and P1 Max, and but it has been surprisingly getting cheaper and even better. And if you have bought the F1 before, I have never heard them heard good things about them, but this is a different tuning and we're going to take a look at it. Uh, first thing here that comes to your mind is they say it's a new generation for 14.2. If I remember correctly, the Z12 was like 14.8 and the 7 Hertz was like the 14.2. Uh, many people online say like they're kind of like the same driver or like slight tuning adjustments. I'm not sure, but uh, the new generation here, they use an N55 lighter magnet which makes the driver faster and allows them to make the cost a little lower. Uh, surprisingly, there is no specs on the box on the outside or the inside. Uh, this is my first IEM from Nice HCK. I have bought some of their cables, which are excellent, as we will see here. So let's go and open the box. And this is the 4.4 version, if you notice. And here you find the, your cable tie, which is needed and which is actually very nice. You get the nice HCK logo here. And one of the nicest and most simplistic and minimalistic packaging I have ever tried in IM. You get your two nice earpieces here. Let's have a quick look at it. Uh, the color is actually excellent. It's this blue with gold accent and here they are i would arguably say they are on the medium to small size um the covering of the earpiece is a very light cnc machined aluminum alloy which is very very light and well made to be honest kudos to them um if you look here you will find the if you zoom in left and right letter to show you which side you're going to use again an appreciated gesture from nice hck and you get this filter on the nozzles left and right um i would prefer in the past to say that the two pin should have like a deeper uh, impression but uh, to be honest like this is a very solid connection which i appreciate a lot while we're at it let's have a quick measuring of the weight because a lot of people ask me here I'll be measuring the left side, no ear tip. And as you can see, it's 5.2 gram to 5.3, which is, as I said, very, very light. Very, very light. This is, this is excellent. Um, reminds me of the Pula, which I did a review in the last video. So these are the ear pieces. As I said, they're excellent. And as we move on quickly, uh, open this box here you find this well-made case it is it is like not hard it's hard on the corners but it's very well made the zipper is very high quality easy to move and then you open and you get this very spacious carrying case which is enough to carry more than you'll ever dream of um, First ear tip, let me talk with the not nice stuff. First ear tips, they provide a lot of ear tips. And these ones are the traditional. Uh, they remind me of the ones that Moondrop put on and the Beelon and stuff. I tried these and let me tell you, they're not the best to be honest. They're kind of hard, but they're, they're okay. Um, thankfully, a nice HCK provide us with another two bags. Of ear tips the um, three pairs and three pairs here uh, these look like kind of like spin fits or like candy tips uh, these are very good I use the yellow they're very good and here I use this I prefer this one you have the medium with the green and the orange for the small and the light blue or cyan for the 
large. Honestly, it's not that large. It's, I would say, medium, but it works good. Fits my ears. I have no complaints. It's awesome. So there are your ear tips here. And now let's get to the start of this show, which is this excellent, well-made 4.4 cable, which again, just let's start from the top here. You look here at the left and right. And immediately, like this IEM costs 99, but look at the quality of the attention to detail that the company provides. I love the red and blue markings on the terminations of the cable, just to show you which side is left and which side is right without having to read anything. You know, I wish more companies do that. Even if they provide a letter, nothing beats the old standard way of coloring as showing which, color, which side is right and which side is left. Now we move down, we have this excellent metal uh, cable splitter. Again, nice gesture indeed. And then we move on to the cable itself, which is very smooth, not on the thick side, it's nice. Uh, not on the thin side either. Um, it's very soft, it's very flexible, and the connector is very well made. You have these grooves here uh, so that you can grab it. And of course the 4.4 is very sturdy. Uh, very, very good and well made cable. So this is the cable side of things. Let's move on. Let me get this stuff cleared up in a second. So now that we have gotten that out of the way, uh, let me, before I move on, let's start by measuring the nozzle diameter. And as you can see, it sits comfortably at 5.8 millimeter. As you can see, it's at the exact top. So that's okay. It's not on the small side, it's not on the big side, it's on the comfortable side. And very good. And then here's another look at the filter uh, of the nozzle. It's like a spiral shape. Now, let me start by describing the sound quickly, according to what I heard, because it doesn't match some of the graphs I've seen. And then let me compare it to a few other planar IMs very quickly. Uh, sound, let me start by first the sound impression. The sound signature here is kind of balanced. It's balanced, but with a focus on bass, exactly the bass. But let's start with the sound spectrum going from low to high. And let me start by saying the sub bass. Um, here, I think there is a sub bass roll off. Um, I'm quite sure of that because I've listened to some tracks that I use for testing that has a lot of sub bass. And here the F1 Pro doesn't actually produce that sub bass that much. It's very light where it should actually rumble. Um, now, contrast to that, you get to the mid bass and bass, and you're like faced with this excellent bass that's detailed, that slams hard, that's impactful, and it's actually overemphasized, in my opinion, compared to other IMs. That's the way I see it. Um, it's very good, it's very enjoyable. Um, I heard some people say that this is like a V-shaped IM, but to be honest, in my point of view, like, no, not to me. Like, I, I kind of uh, slightly disagree with that point. I, I know and I hear the emphasis on the treble and the bass, but moving on to the vocals, the vocals are not recessed, they are not normal, they are slightly pushed forward. You can see that with, it's actually slightly on, when we move to the upper mid-range, it's more than forward because for me, there is a bit small amount of vocal siblings that I encountered. It depends, of course, on what you listen to. Um, but with some female vocals, gonna kind of like seem a bit much sometimes. And with male vocals, it could be seen as uh, with the screams and like, you know, the high tones could be sometimes, sometimes just a little bit much, nothing too much at all, to be honest. Some foam tips and this is gone. Um, also, I forgot to say at the bass, uh, there is a small amount of bass bleed that you could hear in the male vocals and you can actually perceive it um, making some of the female vocals slightly, slightly husky or slightly um, bass dominant, if I could describe it as that. Um, so with that, moving forward, in the treble, it is good, it is okay, a lot of detail again. And 
you get to that treble, the upper treble part, which again here is overemphasized again, gives the I am a sense of air and a sense of detail, which is very good. Like the, the end result is that you get this sound signature that is uh, sub bass lacking, but very good bass. You get very good treble, you get very good detail. And sometimes every now and then you get this vocal sibilance, which you can tune like one or two, three dB max. I don't think you'll need more than that. The important point here is that the uh, A to 10 or 12K region is okay, and the treble is okay. There's no like S harshness or sibilance in that way, no. So that's awesome. Uh, fit and comfort is superb. Like it's very small and it fits in your ear uh, perfectly, no problem at all. So sound stage also is slightly higher than average, but I would say the imaging here is average. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Um, the most important thing I want to say here is the value of this IM. This comes in at $99.99, which is like insane when you think about that we're talking about a planar IM at this price. Um, this removes many, many of the IMs at higher price range. Like this is a market changer in my opinion. At a hundred bucks, if you look at the value you're getting with the cable, which you don't need to upgrade, with the two pins and the assortment of ear tips that come with it, and the excellent carrying case, uh, you don't need to spend another dime on it. And it's actually, it will shine with you. This IM provides everything you need. Uh, it has excellent detail, it has good sound stage, it has, it's very easy to drive using the full snowy night. I would say like low gain, <laughs> uh, you don't need to do anything more. Um, most of the time you will not be needing to EQ and you will be enjoying the planar bass quality that is detailed and fast and snappy and, and the detailed sound signature which you will get here. This has higher than average detail retrieval and the dynamics are average, but you get also higher than average levels of nuances in, in the music you're listening to. Uh, compared to something like the 7 Hertz, even this has more detail. And comparing it to something like the Arian Starfield, like th that level of detail here blows them away out of the dust, to be honest. So let's get to the comparison part here. If we are going to compare this to the legend itself, the 7 Hertz Stylus. Uh, so let me start by saying the timeless is much heavier, much bigger. <clears throat> and I would say the vocals are a bit recessed on the timeless 7 hertz. They're not like the F1 Pro where it is a bit forward. Actually, let me add another comparison here because I think it would be only fair to compare the three parts. This is the Z12. This is like, to me, was a point in time where the mar the market for planar IEMs changed for me because this has become one of the best planars I, I have listened to and one of the best IEMs at its price. So let's compare uh, first quickly. Let's see the cables. I, I think the cable for the Z12 or the F1 Pro are like the best. Uh, it's kind of like gets to your own preference here, but I don't like the cable on the uh, 700 timeless. I've said that before, although it's an excellent IM, the cable is not my, my choice here. But on both of these, it's okay. I would lean and say the F1 Pro has a better cable because it's more flexible and pliable and easily found with a 4.4. The Z12, you can get the Chameleon or the interchangeable plug adapter cable, which is not the best option because a soldier connection is like kind of more, more stable and gives high, higher sound quality. So that's for that. Sub bass, um, I would give that to the Z12. The Z12 wins here. It has a slightly, but again, very slight sub bass. Um, the F1 Pro has the second sub bass here. I would rank it as second. The 7 Hertz is third. Moving on to the bass, I would say I like the bass of the F1 more but it is close to the Z12. Um, but the F1 Pro has more slam, has more impact. The Z12 is also just right there, like they're very similar here, but the slam on the F1 is more. 
So moving on to the vocals here, of course, the F1 and the Z12 are forward, vocal forward, which is very good. And they both have that slight vocal sibilance, while the 7 hertz, I would rank it third because it gets into the vocal uh, recessed kind of sound signature, which is not the best. Of course, you, you avoid that kind of vocal sibilance on the way, which is, you understand why they did that, but you, you also... Um, you also like miss the kind of vocal forwardness, which renders the instruments very, very well and adds a layer of detail to these um, frequencies, especially the mid, uh, the upper mid range frequencies. Um, moving on to the treble, I think like the the seven hertz misses here. The Z12 and the F1 Pro kind of get the kind of get the cake here, like they they get the prize. They're very well done. There are differences, I will tell you, in my opinion, between the F1 Pro and the Z12. Um, F1 Pro has an excellent soundstage and better than the Z12 in 7 Hertz. F1 Pro, um, the Z12, excuse me, has the best imaging of the three. The imaging on the Z12 is superb. Sometimes it leaves you speechless, in my opinion. Um, and... It, it, it like they're very similar like I think the 7 Hertz is now like it's like more expensive like if you think about the price of this one compared to this one which costs like 99 oh my god like I think like the Z12 only has the benefit of the imaging which is much better the dynamics which are better and maybe maybe the slightly very slightly boost in sub bass the f1 pro has the benefit of the better slam in the bass uh very easy to drive smaller better fit better cable and the price i think it can't be argued um the aero tips you get are awesome and if i had to choose right now um, based on the price alone i would choose the f1 if price is no factor i would choose the z12 just because of the imaging nothing more I like the imaging here, it's very clear and superb. But this is the almost exact same sound signature, and it has even wider sound stage, and it's slightly easier to drive, and it has a better cable, and better ear tips, and case, like the case of the Z12 is kind of small, not exactly like this one, and the ear tips are not the same. So for me, personally, my recommendation for an IM a planar I am from 100 to 200 it would be the F1 Pro yes there is this issue of the vocal silence but it's the same on the Z12 that doesn't prevent it from being an excellent I am the 7 Hertz now is like very hard to recommend although it is a favorite and will remain but kudos to nice HTCK for that hard name but excellent I am I look forward to their future releases and this actually gets my vote and this beats like a lot of IMs now this this is is beats a lot of choices and remains on my list um, there is another IM which I will be reviewing soon but I'm going to give it a listen first again to make sure that I could recommend it because it in my opinion it could beat many IMs especially planar IMs um, in this kind of price range so that has been it, folks. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, suggestions, or any comments, leave them down in the section below. Until next time, stay positive, and I'm out.